Rooster Teeth is sponsored by ExpressVPN. They're the fastest VPN we've ever used. You can give them a try over at expressvpn.com slash rooster. Use it. Encrypt your stuff. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm John. I'm Barbara. And I'm still a pre-recorded Gus. Uh, where I like what? you you did shifty eyes before you started that ad read. You were like, "Oh, I hope no one's I, watching me." I had to double check and make sure that all the the graphics were right because Eric messed them up two weeks ago. Oh, he's got you. It paranoid. was Eric. Yep. <laughs> this is this is uncouth. Uh, as the producer of the show, I say we cut that part out and we say, or we overdub it with here. Use this. Eric did a great job, and we're so proud of him every week. <laughs> Thank right. you. We can uh we'll delete it only if you can spell uncouth right on your first try. U N C O U T H. Oh, look at him. Spelling bee champion. It, baby. <laughs> wow, you have that's a career outside of rooster teeth after that. That's, that's Professional speller. Uh so yeah, this uh, the, just to re reiterate, this episode is pre recorded, so I'm sorry, chat. We cannot uh see see what you're saying. Or we can see it, just we're gonna see it several days after we've taped this so it's gonna be we old should just news. call out users that we recognize on a day-to-day -day basis like oh peter hayes that was a good that was yeah. a good thing you pointed uh, out there oh sorry uh, i i agree with your opinion dong donor 420 <laughs> <laughs> way to go corn world uh <laughs> it's weird i guess that like, like when these usernames out of context you're like what the hell am i saying <laughs> <laughs> But like when you're saying like, oh, so-and-so says, like you just attribute it like it's a name, like it's nothing. So what day does this I come out? This is coming out the 28th. So oh. that not next podcast, the podcast after. So we're we're recording this one today. We're recording this on the 16th. So Wait, wait. Do that again? Wait. We're this recording... is for after one we've not made? Right. So we're going to make another one on Monday. And then this one comes out after that one. Because, Gavin, most people are taking off that week after Christmas, the 28th through the 3rd or whatever that week is. Yeah. And next week, we have the podcast on Monday. And some people are taking off starting like the 23rd, 24th, for a thing called Christmas. And so we wouldn't be able to pre record the one for the 28th. So we had to do it this right. week. So that also, is, like, has that ever happened before? Done it out of order? I Aside think it from might have. It might have happened once, maybe. maybe. I think it sounds like it's familiar, like something that we had to do and hated. Uh, but it's like <laughs> if we if we didn't do it this way, then someone from someone would have to work on Christmas, right? So it's like we didn't want anyone to have to work during the holiday, so we have to do it this way to make we'll sure. We'll just get we all the Jews yeah. from Rooster Teeth into one podcast. <laughs> we'll do a podcast Anytime together. anybody think, says we're going to gather all the Jews, yeah, I whoa. really tense up. <laughs> I think there was there was probably a time early on in the podcast where I had to work on Christmas, where it's like I had to post it and update it and everything. Uh, and I definitely do not wish that on anybody. So let's uh, let's let's pre-tape now and have conversations that we would have after Monday. Yeah, I just I, it makes sense to not have people work on Christmas. I just wouldn't have done it that way. I would have just we, done two two pre-records. Two. two uh, Oh yeah. Sorry, go guess. No, no. I was, I was trying. I was going to ask how he was going to do it, and he said it to pre-record. So, like pre-record just... this. This would be Mondays, and then we would pre-tape <laughs> the twenty eighth later this week. Yeah, and then uh, continuity would be think, great. But, but, but the, the problem first is... thing. The first thing you said. The first thing you said. We said hi, Gavin, and then there was a pause, and you said not a lot has happened between the last one and this one, huh? So your idea is to put less time between this one and the next one if you were to pre-record. How is it less time if you just flip the recordings and do... Because we can't do the 28th on the 21st. So, uh, Gavin, is what you're saying is this would be the pre-record for Monday, <laughs> right, and then on Monday one... we pre-record for the 28th. <laughs> yeah, while this one is going out. <laughs> God. We, we do the we next We do a podcast. <laughs> I'm just, we do I'm the just podcast the, live, but the, it's not live. The, the, the problem I'm is just watching. I'm watching the timer on my audio recording and seeing how much of this podcast we can use up just yeah. discussing <laughs> this argument the, with the, Gavin. The is, so, so far, so we're at six minutes. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> time. It's like a Christopher Nolan movie. Yeah, I hate 
pre-taping. Uh, so I try to avoid it whenever possible. That's what it boils this down to. This way we only have one pre-tape. Uh, yeah. So normally Eric asks, you know, which ones I want to pre-tape. If you know, we want to pre-tape, he gives me the option. And I say, like, I'll normally say I, I want to pre-tape as little as possible. So this way we're only pre-taping one instead of pre-taping two. That way, like I said earlier, we can talk to Peter H. and Cornworld and Sombres yeah. and Caladrius and whoever else shows up in chat. At roosterteeth.com, think... you, mem- you can get a free membership and <laughs> chat with us, or you can uh, get a first membership. You get a little star by your name and some extra bonus features and watch it live. I I guess you would only be able to watch it live if you had a first membership. How does it work? No, no. you can watch it live. That's right. You can watch uh, it live now. right now. Yeah. I feel like you made a, a fine decision. I was really just trying to be difficult and have a little bit, bit of an argument. That's so, good. Job, Ate, up job five, done. Ate up about five minutes of the podcast, <laughs> so that's good. When we don't um, have stuff going on in our lives, so, we argue with each other. It makes no, for entertaining content. we got Christmas coming up. I, you uh, mean it I, just I, happened? Right. It was great. <laughs> I loved it. I got, liked gift. You, you got to join blue team and go back and. You just gotta. Uh, you gotta go. Fuck. I loved when when Meg gave me. And then we'll we'll, we'll put that in later. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm gonna dub in something else over there. <laughs> <laughs> gave me a handy. <laughs> Merry I, Christmas. I've been. Uh, I, I started since we've had a lot. We have a lot of free time, you know, uh, being quarantined at home. I've been. Uh, I've decided to, to pick up a project. I started to start working on something that I've always wanted to do, but I've never found time. I don't know why it took me so long to start uh, doing this. I've always heard about people tinkering with Raspberry Pi computers, so I finally bought oh. a Raspberry Pi, and uh, I just put it together. I just installed the operating system on it. I'm going to start uh, tink- tinkering around with it. Are you guys? That, is, is everyone that familiar with that? Pattern changed drastically once you added computers at the end of that sentence. Yeah, no. I was like, I was like, like Raspberry Pi. Sorry, I'll fuck with Raspberry here. Pi. What's a, what's a, hey, Gavin, since you went, oh, it sounds like you know what he's talking about. What's a Raspberry Pi computer for us idiots? A little tiny programmable computer, isn't it? Like, sometimes you can get them, like, well and you can get them to do specific things or run <laughs> things. I've never used one. I've just <laughs> watched videos what people have made with them. Yeah. So, <laughs> I like how Gavin, <laughs> there you go. we ask Gavin what it is, and he says, oh, it's a little computer, isn't it? And it's like, <laughs> we don't know. That's what we're yeah. So, There's is it just, so it's just, it's a micro computer yeah you can, you can see you get basically the little board and uh, you put yeah, like yeah. the heat sinks and the fan on it and then i, yeah, put this I see case on it. Or yeah. like that i put this case on it and uh i'm gonna start tinkering with it so i saw the, the reason uh what spurred me to do it was esther saw online that uh there was a tutorial like someone i guess built what they call a magic mirror where it's just like uh, a display behind a mirror so you can have like embedded information like a smart mirror basically that has they'll show you like the weather and you know, stream video on it or whatever you want. So uh, like a, a two-way mirror that you then would have something lit up behind it that would shine through. Okay, I got it. That's cool. Yeah. That's you like a little smart mirror. on them too. Yeah. So you can, it's like an iPad on your mirror. Right. Or And you can get like a camera to do facial recognition stuff. So I'm, I, I'm at step one. I installed the operating system on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to start uh, tinkering with it. I literally did, finished installing the operating system right before we went live here. Are you oh, gonna? Wow. Is that what you're gonna do? Do a mirror, or are you gonna do something else? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the mirror. We'll see how that goes, uh, and then go from there. I mean, it's a it's a cool idea. I've, I'm, what's the uh, what's the estimated cost of how much that little guy took to make? This like all the, the, the motherboard and all. So that I stuff? I bought a package that had the case and wow. everything. Uh, this this particular model has eight gigs of RAM. You can get a base model with two gigs of RAM. Uh, this whole package, I believe, was one oh nine. Okay. Uh, you like, uh, but like I said, this is the higher end one because it has more RAM. You can get the cheaper one. I mean, you don't need the case. Like you could build it just with the board, and you can get like cheaper components doing that way. It's cute though with the little case. So I like that. Yeah. I wonder but, how that compares to a full size desktop of the past, in terms of its power. Oh, like you could probably list that and then list under everything it's more powerful than in the yeah. history of like computers. <laughs> it's and like it's just more like, powerful than everything before 2002. Yeah, or something. it's like, what what took us to the moon? That's, that's like a quarter of this little thing. Uh, or this, this thing's a quarter of that or what, so on and so forth. I think that'd be a, things, a fun project. I yeah. just love things that aren't food that have food names. <laughs> it's always my favorite. Like, like the fact that like this what? is called a Raspberry Pi is amazing. I don't know. Like, I love when people name their pets after food. Or like cheese like, sandwich. Is that, is that really the first food you could think of, Gavin? <laughs> Out of all the foods in the world, cheese sandwich. It's like a good base food, isn't it? A good starter. Like, 
like biscuit or Oreo or mm. uh, you know, so I can't. I'm blanking Pancakes. on anything else. Pancakes, Pancake. yeah, waffles. <laughs> uh, I had a, actually a friend who just like uh, the idea of one animal being called plural food. Hey, look, there's pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that that was a uh, whose dog Mariel's, was it that we Mariel. Meryl's? Yeah, uh, yeah. Her ex girlfriend had a dog that we tried to name Pancakes, but uh, <laughs> I think his name was Oliver. So we were not successful in that. That's right. I could never remember what that dog's actual name was. I know because we it called pancake. it Pancakes all yeah. the time because it was Pancake. Uh. Uh, Gavin, uh, or, or Barb, you brought up uh, something and, and it made me think of telling Gavin. I introduced my girlfriend for the first time to digestives uh, a night ago. Um, she'd never had one. And so we had, I made her a, a nice cup of tea and gave her some digestives. And we watched a, a little bit of a movie and it was a delightful encounter. And so Plain I ones had, or a, a good uh, chocolate digestive? I I never, I never got into the chocolate ones. I've always loved just the plain ones. The, oh. the, and so, yeah, I know, I know. I've really wanted to try to get into the chocolates. I've tried the regular ones. I've tried the dark chocolate ones. Um, but it's, just a plain old digestive it, dipped in tea, so good. Sounds like a drug about? thing. We did digestives <laughs> and then we laid down and watched a movie. Yeah. Uh, digestive? We, digestive. How do you feel about Jaffa's? Love them. Jaffa's are, are fantastic. Um, and I am of the party that you're allowed to dip them. Mm, um, ooh, bold statement. Explain, explain to us uncouth uh, Americans what a digestive is, because I'm, I'm, I'll admit I'm kind of lost. Sponge cake cookie like thing uh, with a uh, circle of jam on the top, and then that whole part is then uh, dipped like one side of it into chocolate, so that hardens. So you've got like chocolate hard at the top, a little bit of jam underneath there, and then the whole thing is like this soft sponge cookie underneath. Mm. Um, I've never had jam in a in a digestive. What's the other? What's the um, what's the other things that you have? In, oh, not digestive. He asked for Jaffers, right? Oh, sorry. Did I describe Jaffers instead of digestives? I apologize. A Jaffa cake. It well, yes. That's a Jaffa. Describe, what I described, described was a Jaffa, Jaffa cake. cake. Yeah, it's like a jellyish, jammy thing. But they're, they're a lot smaller. Like a, a Jaffa's like this big, and a digestive's yeah. like that big. Jaffa's like a Oreo size, basically. Yeah, digestives are basically just a hard uh, biscuit cookie. Um, uh, God, describe the flavoring, uh, Gavin. Of a digestive. Yeah. I don't know if you can. It's like. Sugar? It's like cookie. It's cookie. <laughs> it's biscuity. Um, yeah. Crummy. <laughs> a little crummy. sweet, right? Just a little yeah. sweet. It's 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 a it's a it's a normal like cookie flavor essentially, like the dough. But it's it's harder. It's flatter. Um, yeah. It, it's it will, it's you great for dipping. It. Yeah. It's a good snack and, uh, to it. And uh, as if you know me well, you would know that I do not dip because uh, shit gets soggy real fast, and I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. That's that track, yeah, I, Gavin. Like do you uh, dip Oreos, Gav? No. Are you supposed to? Some people do. That's a joke, I mean, right? that's that's like, no. I, well, I don't know if Gavin's a joke. Dipping Oreos is not a joke. In fact, I'm not it's a been joke. Quite a... No, I'm saying Gavin, like, Gavin not knowing that you dip Oreos, and that's a common thing. That's that's a joke, right? Or you, like, dip them know. in milk and stuff? Yes. yes. Yeah, no, I don't do that. I don't really just drink a cup of milk, though. Hmm. Well, that's why you dip the Oreos in the milk, and then... This Oreo milk. <laughs> I've been, you, you know, I've been fucking around with hot cocoa a lot lately. I've been. Wait, uh, does, I like the way. Before that we get Gus, too far away, does that mean you have Oreos with water? Like, what do you have no, your he Oreos? Just eats the, or you could just eat the Oreos. <laughs> you could just eat the like, Oreos. What do you? No, you but what do you drink them. when you eat the Oreos? Because surely you get firstly, thirsty. Firstly, I don't often eat Oreos. Secondly, do you have to eat them with liquid? I assume you get thirsty because they're, <laughs> you know, dip they're them in water. <laughs> a dry, no, not dip them, but like, what do you quench your thirst with that's, while you're that's eating? That's why Oreo I mean, thins not... are the superior Oreo. They don't make you no, as thirsty. Oh, shut up! Shit. No, they're not. They're yep. not made of. They're not made of compressed salt. I'm not eating one Oreo. I'm like, <laughs> bloody hell! I am parched. I can just <laughs> suck a few down and then it's fine. <laughs> do you, well, do you, I'm a thirsty do, bitch. I have questions. <laughs> so I have. Uh, same. Gav, do you ever do like chocolate cookies with uh, like a milk? I say I, it sounds like you're just not a milk person, so you probably don't really do any dipper. of that. Not really a dipper of anything. Ja if, uh, if digestives and anything, coffee's good too. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a drink with it sometimes, usually a tea, like an Earl Grey with a biscuit or something, but I won't, I won't get them involved in each other's business. They'll get involved <laughs> in my mouth. That's about it. Do you do chips and dip? Is that a dip that you enjoy? Like salsa? 
Yeah, I mean that's not like a runny liquid. If I can, sp if I, <laughs> if it will get absorbed by my shirt, uh, I won't dip stuff in it. Is that a good rule? Is that a bench? Clearly, you've okay. never spilt salsa on your shirt because that shit absorbs right into it. Yeah, but you can still wipe that off, and it'll be like you'll have something. Yeah. It doesn't just go like. No, Gavin yeah, pats sure. all his salsa dry with a with a paper <laughs> towel to get all the, as much liquid out as possible and so make the salsa dry. He only does the tomato chunks and nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> that <laughs> means Gavin would not do French dip because au jus. Oh, is, uh... French dip is so good. That, that, that is soggy bread. Yeah, and like French onion soup and all that, and then Ooh, get out. So good. like a bread in the middle. It's so I could good, hear though. your throat get closing out. as you're talking. I could hear you getting like that throw up y feeling when you're yeah. talking about it. It's preparing <laughs> like, oh, to a <laughs> <laughs> This episode of the Rusty Podcast is brought to you by Burrow. Burrow offers the easiest, most convenient way to get a comfortable new sofa delivered to your door. And it's not just sofas. All Burrow furniture is thoughtfully designed for function and practicality and designed to go perfectly together. It's foolproof furniture. It's high quality, stylish, and built to make your life easier. Uh, one thing I love about Burrow is how versatile it is. You can add seats or rearrange them from love seat to sofa to sectional and back. They're built for real life. They're made with durable fabric options and thoughtful features like a built-in USB charger. You can even customize your Burrow. Choose the color, fabric, arm style, leg style, size, and shape of your seating. It's not just that, Burrow offers more than sofas like clever storage focused coffee tables and modular easy to hang wall shelves. Uh, so check out what else they have to offer. Burrow's perfect for pet owners, you know, like myself. They got, they got scratch and stain resistant fabric for anyone who wants stylish quality furniture but doesn't know where to start. And as always, every single Burrow order includes fast and free shipping. Right now you can save an extra $75 off your purchase by going to burrow.com slash rooster. That's B-U-R-R-O-W dot com slash rooster for $75 off. So oh. I realized that, uh, you know, I have, I've moved my desk quite a bit over the past couple of weeks. I'm sure y'all have noticed I'm much further away from the wall behind me. Uh, and I've also moved the camera a lot closer to me. It used to be several feet away. And uh, one negative side effect I realized is that when I open up my podcast notes document, it uh, <laughs> showers me <laughs> in white light. So now I guess I need to keep it minimized. So wait, you, you moved both? You went yeah. towards the camera and brought the camera towards you? Yes. Okay. It's, so could yeah. you just uh, do you have like um like a ring light or some type of key light in front of you? I've got lights on either side, left and right here. He's got soft like, boxes, right? Make yeah. them brighter. I then... could, but I, I I'm only now realizing I need to do that. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I, I I had I had adjusted it with no documents open on my uh, computers, which you know is uh is much darker because I have a black background on both monitors, and that's you know no no documents open. Now that you're camera's so close it's like unflattened you like you look much yeah. more three-dimensional <laughs> now you look you look really round your head looks like a ball <laughs> thank you it is <laughs> uh yeah it's a uh, it's, it's it's been an ongoing process because I, I had a ton of tripods back behind my desk between me and uh the camera and i've managed to get rid of <clears throat> all of them there's only one left back there uh that i can't get rid of um uh, so it's, it's helped it? out quite a bit What's it's got it a doing? It's a, I've, I've got a, uh, a C-stand with a flag on it to block the sunlight out of a window. Oh, fair play. Hmm. Yeah. So that it doesn't oh, yeah, uh, overpower me. What's that? Kitten cam? Oh my god, sorry. Oh, dude. Uh, distracted There's a me. pile of them. Oh, Smee, they, look at these. Look at these kittens. They, uh, if I leave an article of clothing out anywhere, they, uh, <gasps> they congregate to the article of clothing. They like it. Smee, so look at that's, the kittens. That's a hoodie. Look at them. There's all... All my little tuxedos. I've been waiting for more pussy on this podcast, and it's finally <laughs> <Nice>. happened. And... <laughs> Good one. So, there you go. I'm drowning in it. Barbara, show cats. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have pets. I want a dog. Trevor and I keep playing with the idea of getting a dog. I know I bring it up on like every other podcast, but. <sighs> Just take one of my cats. Know. It's it, it'd be easier to take care of. We're than not a dog. cat people, though. We don't. Neither of us really yeah, like cats. But I will. I will. I will counter this. One of the reasons why you haven't gotten a dog and continue not get a dog is the amount of work and responsibilities required to get a dog, especially if you get a young dog. However, yes. kittens, the most autonomous little suckers I've ever dealt with in my entire life. All right. Fair enough. Uh, they 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 automatically poop in a box that is there for you. You don't have to take them outside to do anything. Uh, they clean themselves. Um, they're they're fantastic. 
And contrary to most people's stereotypes of cats, which I had kind of ingrained in me for my whole life because I grew up being just dog people, they're quite affectionate and playful and uh, are not necessarily standoffish and uh, loners only. Um, well, these I imagine guys... it has a lot to do with the person raising it. Like you're, you're really good with animals and very comfortable with animals. So you're very like hands on with them. Um, and I know Bernie yeah. talked about being that way with Joe when he was very young. So people like he's very comfortable with people just picking him up and doing all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I mean, that's a level of like comfort of, the, of you handling them a certain way. But I just mean sheer uh, like a lot of people love how dogs want their attention and seek them. That's what these guys do as well. These guys constantly want my attention. If but I went over to the it's on their terms, though not always not and and not and not i think in a majority sense and and because like i like i get that probably some cats might have that personality but uh these guys approach me constantly and when i go to them like if i were to go to bed right now and wake them up uh, i can almost guarantee you that both if at least two if not all three of them would then approach me for pets without Mm. me uh like with me going at them not on their terms they i just i go like i want to give cuddles and they would actually come to me and everything like that um they like it. They they actually very much like it. And all three of these guys love belly scritches and and they're, I love how they're very affectionate. Petting Smee with his one finger out and letting Smee do all the work. He he knows where he wants his rubs. Like if I do this, he'll <laughs> he'll like put, put the bit he wants it. There you go. He wants it on yeah. the eyes. He wants his he wants his head done there. <laughs> he looks really wide eyed. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. If, obviously, get a dog if you want to get a dog, but. I can say, having been a dog person for 30 plus years of my life, I'm quite surprised at how many of the stereotypes of what cats are are completely wrong. I just, uh, they're so, they're so sharp. They're very sharp animals. They, they can be, yeah. <laughs> you also said you're, you're amazed by the wizardry of them uh, knowing how to poop in the box instantly. Yes. Like, uh, you know, dogs, you can obviously teach uh to do you know their business where they're supposed to do it and i've done that multiple times but that takes time and it's also a constant issue you you sometimes have to revisit if they're having problems like uh these guys were these guys are the youngest ones i've gotten so far and they were six weeks old when i got them litter box was was theirs um just put a litter box near them and they went and did their business in there and they continue to do so and um yeah, uh, especially right now in the cold times, and Gus, you probably deal with, this with the cold or with the oh, rain. Sometimes it can be it, yeah. uh, annoying to take a dog out, and sometimes the dog doesn't really want to do their business, and so you have to be out there for a while. Um, none of that with these guys. It's in you know just a little box that I go and scoop, and every once in a while, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I really. Uh, oh, there, I found a dark mode for my document. Uh, I really hate having to go outside, and uh, especially like lately, as we've been in a real cold streak here, and mm-hmm. it's been a huge pain in the ass. And I've actually had really bad luck lately uh, this, this is going to be a good segue speaking of animal shitting um i've <laughs> recently ruined two different pairs of shoes stepping in some kind of wild animal shit in my backyard uh i don't know if it's the raccoons but something is shitting in my yard <laughs> and because there's a lot of leaves on the ground now so it's hard to see and if it's dark at night i can't see very well either and i've stepped in shit twice i think in the last week and just gotten it all smeared up in the bottom of my shoes what's up barbara i have a question for you is there anything that you actually like about having a backyard (laughs) if, if, if i didn't have dogs that needed to use it i would not i would pave it over yeah. But could you just like take them on a walk around the neighborhood with that, like to to let them shit just like on a walk around yeah, the neighborhood? Yeah, but then of... that's more work. Like then, <laughs> like multiple times a day, I need to go out and walk around as opposed to just going into the yard. You know, uh, ideally for just a quick uh, a quick poo. Because I feel Again, like you you're should... a, you're actually rallying towards the cat cause even more by putting this out there. That like I have a balcony and no yard and anything like that. I don't have grass uh, around me, but not a problem. Got kitties. Mm-hmm. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Yeah, it sucks. I, I, if I were you, you and Esther should just move to a condo, no backyard, <laughs> just pavement everywhere, or like a patio, like John has, and uh, just take them out for, uh, uh, you know, right in front of the house, or just put down like fake astroturf, like my neighbor did. Yeah, here's the here's the here's the problem I'm also having though. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do an old podcast callback from years ago. Uh, years ago, I gave Brandon Farmahini such shit about buying 
um, pieces of grass <laughs> online and having them shipped to his house to put on his balcony so his dogs uh, could use it to go to the bathroom. Uh, I, I nowadays I wish I had a solution like that so I could just get rid of my yard and have them use uh, grass. But on principle, I cannot do that because I m made fun of Brandon so much about that like four years ago now at like, this point. Could you just make some of the yard like grass and the rest of it like no scape or whatever it's called where you put down like rocks and stone and yeah, pavement and whatnot? Maybe I, I mean, I know it's that. a waste of a space, but... It just seems to cause you so much grief. Yeah. Based on that logic, too, you won't be able to buy a cold mailbox either. No, I'm never, I'm never <laughs> buying a cold mailbox. It's okay. Uh, I think I don't think that'll be an issue in my life. Uh, I, I, I think I talked with John about this yesterday, but you know, in the all of this uh, quarantine that's going on, I talked about John maybe the other day. Anyway, whatever. Um, I've, I've, I've started watching Doom Patrol. Uh, and I finished season one the other day, and that's a pretty surprising show. It's one of those shows I went in like, I don't know, this looks pretty stupid, and uh, I started watching it. It's it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like the best show ever, but it's really entertaining. They do some uh, really innovative things. Does anyone else besides John watch that show? No, mm -mm, not it's yet. Good. It's it's really <laughs> off the wall. Like they'll do things that are unexpected that you wouldn't you wouldn't see i think in in most any other show and i think maybe one of the charms of it is that they don't take themselves seriously i think if, if, mm. if i think if the show took itself really seriously i would hate it yeah it's 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 very aware of itself it has a good tone with that um the voice that that's spoken through the show um feels authentic uh it's full of uh, great performances. Brendan Fraser is 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 one of the uh, most notable, but the whole cast is full of uh, amazing performances. Uh, and yeah, it's it also just stays weird and strange almost every single episode, so you don't really know what you're going to be tuning into. Um, and and it also is quite uh, inclusive. Um, oh yeah, and, very much. and diverse in uh, and it's and it's also uh, you know I'm gonna love this. It's queer as fuck. Oh yeah. <laughs> um queerness ah. is a big part of it across the board and i appreciate that um and it also has a big theme that talks about um uh it's okay to have problems and we all need to be working on our problems our own personal problems that's a great theme in the show yeah and it, it's uh it's incredibly zany <laughs> yeah and they do a pretty good job with what is probably a quite of a, a limited budget the the first season came out of dc universe and dc universe probably wasn't like throwing down netflix dollars on like the series they probably did their best they can with what they had and it 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 does a good job and season two holds up as well I'm, it's 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 a well-made show i'm kind of scared to start watching season two honestly just because i read that they had to shut down production towards the end because of covid so that the season yes. really wasn't quite finished uh yes. so i don't want to I'm kind of like hesitant to start it be just because I read that. I, re I kind of wish I hadn't read that. Yeah. Speaking it, um... of, of which, oh, sorry. Nope, that's it. I was just saying yes to guess. Uh, I don't know if this happened today or yesterday, but I, I just read news and also, again, we're shooting on the 16th, so this would have been days ago at this point. Uh, you guys hear about Tom Cruise freaking out on his crew on Mission Impossible? I... He, is, yeah. he, is, he is crazy AF. We all know this. <laughs> Sometimes he's crazy in awesome ways that are like actually good. And if you read the transcriptions of what he specifically said when he went off those individuals that were on set that were gathering too close near a monitor, mm -hmm. it's it's perfect messaging and it's it's got sentiment behind it because he's like he's not just yelling at them because he doesn't want to shut down the 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 filming for selfish reasons he like points out it's like you'd be costing this person their job and there's people losing their homes that need us to be setting the gold standard of how these productions work for right. us to be able to continue people having their work and you are ruining that for people he's mm -hmm. not being like you're shutting down my movie so i can't be a star he's like no this guy over there that guy right there you're going to take away his job you okay with that you do it again you're off my fucking oh line. so he was in like executive producer mode right right yeah, yeah. what are you oh, talking I've about on, he, I, i've been on sets where executive producers scream it's pretty common uh they got to get the point across to a lot of people who probably yeah. aren't listening so i haven't heard it but i assume that's what he was doing yeah i mean essentially he yeah. says that you know they're it's the future of the movie making industry that the only reason they can make this is because of the protocols they set and they're, they're essentially testing these protocols to see how other movies can adopt them and and use them and that if they fail it's a failure for the industry as a whole and uh, you know yeah. that tons of people would would be out of work 
And I read also yeah. that they had shut down production on that film for a few days in Italy because of COVID problems, which is why I'm sure... It's apparently months behind. Right. I'm sure he didn't want it to happen again or, you know, have it get worse, uh, which is probably why he was so pissed off. It's, it was yeah, just... Uh, I agree with it, mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. I'm sure you... I didn't you... bring it up in a way to be like, oh, you hear Tom Cruise crazy again? But yeah, no, no, like, I, I'm like, no, I actually agree <laughs> with the sentiment. Like, fucking uh, it... take this seriously and be responsible. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 nice to see someone do that from the industry, not from the perspective of they were costing him money, but they were going to cost money from people who very much need that paycheck. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they were like, they were costing him money too. Phil, sure, Phil but, says, but but so but nowhere of the nowhere well. of the transcription did he bring that up. We all yeah. know that's there. We know that's in his mind. But he didn't need to bring that up. He was he was very much poignant on like what what he was trying to get across. Yeah. This episode of the Receipts Podcast is brought to you by HelloFresh. Get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh offers convenient, no-contact delivery right to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the family. The recipes are easy to follow with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way. Uh, HelloFresh is the first global carbon-neutral meal kit company. By skipping the grocery store and using HelloFresh, you're reducing your food waste by at least 25%. Easily change your delivery days or meal plan preferences or skip a week whenever you uh, need to right on the app. Keep your fridge stocked by adding extra meals or additional proteins, quick meals like breakfast on the go or their 10 minute lunches and even desserts to satisfy that sweet tooth. HelloFresh is easy even for someone like me with a restrictive diet. Uh, I choose a meal plan that I receive and I cook the food knowing exactly what is going into each meal. If I feel like using HelloFresh for a meat cheat day, I can do that. But if I want to stay plant-based, I can actually do that as well too. You just go to HelloFresh.com slash RTP10, use code RTP10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash RTP10. Use code RTP10 to receive 10 free meals, including free shipping. You got to eat. Um, speaking of movies, I finally watched Tenet last night. When can Ooh. we finally talk about that movie on the podcast? Is it once it's available for rental? Because it'll be it's available, available now. No, it's available for sale now, but it's not available for digital oh. rental until January. I can't, I can't make then. you let me okay. be on that episode, but I would love to. Yeah, it was... yeah we should wait until uh, most people who want to see it in this country can see it. Okay, we'll wait till after it's available for... Uh, for rental and then uh we'll talk about it after that, that i was, was in this is not a spoiler but i was in a meeting the other day where people were talking about tenant and some people were like oh i didn't really like it and i was like what like did i see the same movie i i think i've seen it like three times now just because like i've known different friend groups who've had private screenings over the last few months uh so i just said yes to all of them because i just wanted to keep <laughs> seeing it and i was just surprised like especially people at Rooster teeth i would expect it to be up everyone's alley but I some can people see just like why, didn't love it i can see why people wouldn't like it yeah i it's, liked it's, it but I it's could confusing yeah <laughs> it, people, it's, it's just very nolan like if you don't like his stuff you don't yeah, gonna like this no sure. nolan is device divisive already as it is like a lot of people just don't like his style I, I'm, I'm with you barb i'm like I devour Nolan's uh, filmography. Love it. Um, uh, Dunkirk is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, mm -hmm. And Tenet will probably be up there the more that I watch it and really think about it. Uh, but I've learned, and this is confusing to me, but I'm trying to to take this in, that a lot of people go to movies and experience movies for differing reasons. It's not so there, there's different tastes, but people also seek to get something from movies that that are that's different from others. And so if Tenet doesn't provide that experience that you want to get from a movie, that's why they don't like it. Yeah, maybe, and that's okay. Maybe they were looking for good, easy to hear dialogue. If that's your goal in watching a movie, Tenet is not the movie for you because everything was muffled as fuck. I, f I take a lot of pride. I I've, I've spent a lot of time <laughs> calibrating my home entertainment system and my speakers and everything. And I was like, this won't be a problem for me. I've got everything set up so great. Man, what the fuck? <laughs> you Why don't you put captions on? Uh, the way I watched it, there were no captions. And honestly, Va if they were really a movie criticism. in the theater, there would be no Va captions in the theater either. No, I agree. I mean... I, I had an impossible time hearing it the first like two watch throughs and then the it's... third one I forget where we were for the third one but it was I think it's the Alamo and I was like I don't know if they have a different sound mixing here but I was like oh I could hear everything in this theater hmm. it's it an interesting great. decision though because 
Okay, because he, you know, it's Nolan, so he has control over every aspect of the movie, even like how it's marketed, all that stuff. But it's it's almost as though he doesn't want you to hear all the dialogue the first time round. It, it's happened like it's, ha- it's you, happened so many times now. You almost feel like it has to be intentional with such an intentional filmmaker. But then again, in the original, like you know, they did the IMAX preview of that scene in the Dark Knight Rises yeah. where they do the where the plane gets ripped open while it's flying and all that. In that, you can hear the original Bane dialogue, which they replaced almost entirely with like new ADR stuff. Yeah, to the point where. The Bane that we got sounds pretty out of place for the scene every time, in my opinion. Like the voice is very, like, very up close on the on the mic, as though yeah. he's never he's never yelling or he's never. But in the original in the original IMAX preview, it sounds like he's in there. He's like speaking at appropriate volumes and distances for where the camera is, which I assume is what he was going for. But pr- probably because people couldn't understand it. They did much more clear, up close ADR. But if he's willing to make the change so people understand it for that, why wouldn't why wouldn't that be like a global change? I guess maybe people didn't like the new Bane as much as the original Bane. I don't know. Well, also, he Nolan also went out of his way to say that other directors were criticizing him, and he thought other directors were being too conservative with their sound mixes, uh, which uh, like was weird to me that he was saying it's not my problem, it's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he has maybe his like personal experience of how his uh you know auditory system pr- processes you know the sound mix of things around him maybe it's just off and to I'm, him it sounds perfect and, unless it is actually I'm an immersion to... thing though where he wants it to be chaotic and loud and he wants you to not be able to <laughs> understand stuff i'm gonna listen to a scene here with my headphones i didn't listen to, i listened to my tv the other day i'm listening to it with headphones on to see if it sounds any better it's it, if anything, uh, some one silly argument you could make is that uh, the fact that you have to listen more intently is a way for him to pull you into focusing on the movie in a very immersive way. It sounds better with I, headphones. I'm, I'm making gonna, I'm gonna shit watch up. It again with headphones. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and watch the whole movie through all the way all the way through again. <laughs> it sounds better. All right. Yeah. I, it's a it's a bonkers movie though. Yeah. I will agree with Gavin about uh, the ADR, which allows me to segue into something I told Gus I want to talk about. There's a movie oh. that had a bunch of ADR <laughs> uh, that makes me think that a lot of like the script and everything was fixed and altered in post. And that movie is uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey version. Um, have you guys watched that? No. You've never watched the Grinch, the Jim Carrey one? No. Really? Barb, have you ever watched it? I, yeah, I've seen it. I couldn't tell you like scenes from it. It's been a long time, but I have seen it. I I want to have a qu- Gus. Have you ever seen the Grinch movie? I've <laughs> I, I've never seen the Jim Carrey Grinch. I've, I'm only I'm more familiar with the cartoon. So okay. I'm curious to hear what you, you have to say. Okay, I, even I, I, I want, have. <laughs> I want to walk you through an interesting realization I had during a rewatching of the film with my kids this last week. So the Grinch movie with Jim Carrey actually spends time creating an origin story for the Grinch as opposed to the cartoon that you guys have experienced prior. Um, that's where you've seen like the memes of like the little like kid Grinch. Have you ever seen those? Like the little, yeah, I've the seen little, that. yeah. Okay. So in that movie, the little girl goes and interviews people about to find out about the Grinch. And so she gets in this scene with these two old biddies that I don't think in the script they ever designate whether or not they are the actual mothers of the Grinch, aunties of the Grinch or whatever. But the babies of Whoville are – the way that she, they explain like how babies are made, they go very much in the, the realm of like storks. But they don't, it's not storks. It's these little umbrella-carried packages little little carriages that bring the babies and drop the babies off at people's houses now there's a moment where they drop a baby off and a dude makes a joke about oh our baby's here sweetie he's like calling to his wife in the house like and then he makes a joke he's like he looks like your boss which is a reference to like uh uh the wife having an affair with the boss which a lot of kids won't get but it's funny (laughs) as an adult um but that insinuates that these babies are the product of a union of two who's um they don't say whether or not there's actual sexual intercourse but it is the combination of two who's or woohoo 
Yes, woo who's <laughs> by who's. Uh, and so that insinuates that. So then the Grinch is brought in, they say, on a weird wind, and he's dropped off at the house of these two women. I assume that insinuates that these these two women are local old lesbians who are living together uh, as partners, and this is their baby. Um, and then, but also these, they're, they're having, again, this is adult humor. You don't get if you're not, a, if you're not an adult watching this, but it happens on a night while they're having a Christmas party at the Christmas party. They have a jar that everyone's putting their keys in. What's that oh mean? God. Everybody. It's a key party. That's a swinger that's a party. Key, that's a swinger party. So these are two old lesbians that are having a swinger party. So they must be like either buy or pan or something like that. And so. That made me start thinking, and this is not backed up by anything involved in the movie, but that made me think, like, is the Grinch, is is he what baby happens when a bunch of queer pansexuals have, like, some sort of orgy? And then have, like... <laughs> it's like everyone... It's just this thing... Molded into one. So he's an orgy baby. I think he's an orgy baby. He's a Christmas because he's, miracle. Because he's different, <laughs> but he's actually, like... In the end, he like turns out to be a bit more advanced, I think, than the rest of them because he's got a lot of like tinkering mechanical skills. He he shows off incredible uh, superhuman strength by lifting up the uh, the sled at one point. Um, he's like the hero at the end, everything like that. So I think the Grinch is like a <laughs> superior next level evolution in the Who race that is caused by a bunch of pansexuals having an orgy. I like Thank this. Thank you for coming like to my TED Talk. With this. This, yes. this movie's I'm available on Netflix, so uh, we can we can stream it and uh, and verify your your claims, Doctor Reisinger. Yeah. Is it possible for twins to have two different dads? I believe I've read of instances where that does happen. It's extremely extremely rare, but it can happen. Wait, what? What do you, you mean? Get, <laughs> they have to is be it? fraternal, but it, I believe it's like if two. Eggs yeah, like, become fertilized at the same, well, you know, within pretty close proximity of each other and then develop as fraternal twins. I think I've read about that happening before. Yeah, Someone, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't be identical twins. It wouldn't be like a, a separation or a, a splitting of one embryo. Or how's so, it, how do I? <laughs> how, what? Oh, Gavin broke. S super fecundation. Super fecundation is the fertilization of two or more ova from the same cycle by sperm from separate acts of sexual intercourse, which can lead to twin babies from two separate biological fathers. <laughs> That's pretty funny, isn't it? What? Someone did ask on TikTok. <laughs> All Barbara's been able to say is what? I don't... <laughs> you broke her what? brain. <laughs> what do, okay, Barbara, where, where, where do we lose you? All right, so... Male has intercourse with female, ejaculates sperm, sperm fertilizes egg and female, that egg gets fertilized. Another man has intercourse with same woman, ejaculates into woman. <laughs> that one of his sperm also fertilizes her egg. What are we yeah, saying? Yeah, a second a, a, egg. A separate egg, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever heard how, of that before. And that's how a Grinch is made. I don't that's think I've ever heard of that before. Made. So no, she gets pregnant a... by two different men at the same time. Because I think I think a double egg is just twins that aren't identical, right? But then a, identical twins is the same egg. I believe that so is I, correct. I, I, identicals are a split egg, fraternal are two eggs fertilized at the same time. Yeah. So if, so if a couple of dudes monked up there and nailed different eggs, it's possible. Yes. Uh, gotcha. uh, someone, someone posted a picture of two sets of twins, guy, guy, girl, girl, and they actually both got married. And so someone asked, would the offspring of those two couples be gen genetically identical? And I believe uh, Hank Green uh, uh, chimed in, as he does on TikTok with scientific questions. And he, he went into more detail, but essentially he said, yes, they would be genetically identical. That's because it would be the product of two twins. Right, that's nuts. I, I don't know. dangerous. <laughs> then, then you have the perfect out. You have the perfect alibi to commit a crime because you can say your DNA evidence is not conclusive that it was you who did it. Hold up. Gavin doesn't get to say something like that and not explain what thought process went through his head. You said it seems dangerous. Elaborate. I don't know. There's all kinds of issues on that with people being the same, <laughs> genetically the same. 
But then there's a bunch of them. What if... I don't know. It's a perfect <laughs> alibi. You can commit crimes. They can't prove it's you. Seems close to incest. I wonder, I wonder if their fingerprints are the same. Kind well, I don't same. think I don't think says necessarily they would be that identical in in their entire biological makeup because I'm not identical to my siblings in biological makeup. But but you're not the same egg though. Yeah, you're not the d DNA genetically. You're not the same. But even right. identical twins don't have identical fingerprints. Hmm. Right. I, I, yeah, I believe I, that's I, true. I should go back to not be speaking out of turn. I should re-listen to that TikTok from Hank Green before I say stuff like this. But we should not all still... four of us just guess, even though there's the information out there. Let's just talk about Grinch genetics instead of talking about human genetics that we don't understand as much as who. No, let's just talk checks. about orgies. Come yeah. on, the fun stuff. How do you make Babby? How was Babby formed? Babby. How was Babby formed? <laughs> How is Babby What's that got to do with ADR? Oh, I it was just a segue I used, but I, I noticed also oh. during watching Grinch, there's a you, you, there's a very specific sound to ADR. You can tell like what you were talking about, Gavin. You can tell it wasn't recorded in the moment. They can sometimes, sometimes try. Can. They they yeah. Sometimes they do a pretty good job of blending it, but sometimes it's very much like that was recorded later. I can tell. Yeah. Um, and Grinch has a ton of that, and a lot of it's like little jokes that kind of sting onto stuff. So you could tell a ton of the. The show's humor comes a lot from uh, uh, Jim Carrey's improvisational and physical comedy, but you can still tell there was a lot of stuff they must have come up with later, or he must have recorded another take or something like that, that they kind of really chopped up into the movie. So yeah. the movie is is quite a, a – you you know, when you're watching some movies, like that movie was edited like crazy. Like there's so much that must have been fixed later on or crafted together. Um, as opposed to another movie that, you know, seems like it's got a lot of long takes and and you could tell people were in the same room doing the their their dialogue together and that kind of thing. Right. That's why I couldn't figure out watching the original Bane scene. Is that I could because I had assumed that was also ADR, but just different take of it. Because in, in the final movie, it sounds like he's his mouth isn't impeded by anything. It sounds like he's talking into like a megaphone or something. It, but in yeah. the original clip, it it actually sounds like He's got something on his face a little bit. But I also, I don't know if that's the case. I would assume they didn't use onset audio ever from that mask because you could, could he even yeah. get anything out through it. I don't know. Who knows? Nolan knows. It depends Nolan on, knows it depends on like how that mask is interacting with his face and how sound comes out through that mask. Cause that mask is like a myriad of different like materials that are, it's not just like just a big old like Darth maybe, Vader mask. Maybe they stuck a microphone up inside the mask. It could have <laughs> like been. Right in front of his yeah, mouth. Might, they might sound, have. Might have sound, it would, I think that would have sounded like shit probably. They also started <laughs> the movie off with Bane inside of an airplane talking. Yes. <laughs> like you got airplane noise and then you got Bane with a mask. Like you with just- With a mask and a bag <laughs> on. Yeah. I remember he does have a bag. He's, he's a black mask. Yeah. And then later he literally is talking through the mask into a megaphone. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just I to remember make it even more complicated. When I watched Just that IMAX it. preview, which was the beginning of that movie, you know, where he like boards the plane and they rip the wings off and do all that shit. I yeah, remember with watching that, uh yeah, it was uh, on IMAX, and I was just—I I remember at, at one point when uh, you know they—they they, they have the plane and they're doing all that shit. I was just shaking my head in my seat, going, "Nolan's just showing off at this point, right? Like this is such <laughs> a ridiculous set piece to to film and to show it to like to start your movie and then to show it off as a preview in IMAX." What did? You, how did you feel when when uh, Nolan bought a plane just to run it into a building for Tenet? I thought it, it. I thought it looked good. I think that's a that was a, a smart move. It always looks better He's, that way. I thought, if anything, in that scene, I thought the building they crashed the plane into looked shitty. <laughs> like it looked <laughs> like a temporary construction that they built to crash a plane into. Like gotcha. the plane part looked good, but then like the part they crashed it into looked like it was a modified extra part of a building that they slammed onto an existing building uh, to. Uh, to crash a plane into for this. I, th I think it's just, I think I've said this before, it's just the ultimate future proofing by not using big CG creations in, in the middle of a shot. Like he's sweet and stuff with CG, but having most stuff real and also shooting it on like 70 millimeter cameras, that's going to look good compared to the stuff that's shot like 80 years from now. I, think, still I, hold I, up, I think I read it was a ridiculously, I, mean, I don't remember, I'm going to top my head, it was a ridiculously low number of uh, CG shots in 10. I want to say it was like only like 230 uh, visual effects for that film. Yeah, and I think uh, 
uh, was it Dunkirk? I think he said that there was no green screen used in the entire film, um, which is oh, wild damn. to watch it like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, Inception, that gimbal he built for the hallway scene. Yeah, that, that was practical, that, right? That's, that's yeah. all practical. It's fucking Joseph Gordon Levitt being tumbled around yeah. in a big old uh, washing machine. Yeah, so cool. the ten, time. Tenet has under 300 VFX shots. And for reference, we talked about this several weeks ago. How many was it? Parasite had like 900? Like it, was, <laughs> like it was a ridiculously high amount that you would never imagine for that movie. Like Parasite had like 900 and Tenet has like a third of those. On your next yeah, watch through, Star Wars Episode Parasite. 3. <laughs> On your next episode or next viewing of uh, a Parasite, Gus, you should try to count all 900 VFX shots. That, 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 that movie does a really good job of hiding them. I've seen some of like the, the BTS stuff where they they show what they did and it's it's fucking bonkers it's it's absolutely insanity i mean that whole house none of that house really exists uh it's like a piece of a set built out in the middle of nowhere and it looks it's so like cool it's part of a house in a neighborhood this episode of the receipt podcast is brought to you by stamps.com okay one thing we learned in 2020 the internet's even more awesome than we thought uh, you got groceries online movies online doctor's visits online and of course going to the postage online with stamps.com Stamps.com allows businesses to do all of their mailing and shipping right from their computer. No need to leave their home or office or home office. Stamps.com has saved small businesses all over the country thousands of hours and tons of money. Now you can too. With Stamps.com, you get the services of the post office and UPS right on your computer, plus big discounts on mailing and shipping rates. You've heard me talk about Stamps.com so many times on this podcast. Stamps.com brings the services of the U.S. Postal Service and UPS right to your computer wherever you are. Stamps.com is a must-have for any business, whether you're a small office sending out invoices, an online seller shipping out orders, or even a giant warehouse sending thousands of packages a day. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. So make 2021 the year you stop wasting time going to the post office and go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk, and with promo code Rooster, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Rooster. That's stamps.com promo code rooster. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Can you guess how many CG shots are in Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith? Oh, God. Oh, um, 6,000. Now you're going a little high, go but it is a lot. 1,500. 2,151 VFX shots. Uh, yeah, and there was like 2,000 Attack of the Clones and like, uh, yeah. Uh, and and that, that like is combined less... though. They did do a ton of practical stuff too. There's a, there's a ton of models in those prequel movies that are like yeah. covered in CG and sweetened with CG to the point where it actually makes it look CG even though a lot of it was deceptively real. However, there are like, there's the BTS footage of like them in the, uh, doing like that, that factory, uh, oh, scene yeah. from the end of it. And they're just in a, they're just in blue. It's just them in blue interacting with nothing, which must be just so hard to do. Who was it? Did they yeah. say at one point filming Lord of the Rings that Ian McKellen just like broke down? He couldn't handle it anymore. Like, <laughs> like it God. broke his brain. Like he just started crying. He's like, I can't do this. I don't know what we're doing. I can't see anything. That's me well, every second the... day of quarantine. <laughs> have you seen the BTS footage of Ian McKellen talking to Frodo at the table? Where it's like they do the forced perspective thing to yeah. make Elijah Wood look small. But on a moving shot, everything else needs to be moving. So they've got like yeah. the camera moving on a dolly and they've got Elijah Wood in the background moving at the same speed. So it looks yeah. like they're sat at the same table. But It's like, so cool. Oh, and then Ian McKellen's looking over there and Elijah was <laughs> looking over there and it's like, oh my God, it's like moving actors to keep them still. It's like the opposite <laughs> of what you usually do, right? But in the in, end, in the thing. final product was amazing. Those, those shots look, they look you know, phenomenal. Yeah. They it's look great. so clever. Yeah, I don't know Love how it. they've figured all that stuff out. I'm always so impressed of just like the capabilities of humanity to figure things out and solutions out for things that they want yeah to a, like a lot of like, maths involved in stuff like that oh like i don't know scale if you movements yeah um i don't know if you guys have watched the imagineering story on uh, yeah. disney plus yeah but like you guys should absolutely check it out because just like them figuring out how rides work and how things in the in the park work and how to build things and how to construct all these different 
aspects of the park it's just insane to me that human beings are capable of doing that mm-hmm. i just like me being like uh i don't know how to calculate <laughs> this thing here <laughs> if, 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 if you want to see the other end of that spectrum you should watch that documentary i talked about a couple of weeks ago uh class action park where it's just like some guys <laughs> drew rides on the back of a napkin they were like i don't know let's see if we can build it <laughs> oh god yeah literally the polar opposite yeah so like people Just with no fast. engineering or math uh, background. Uh, that happened, was it, a, like a year ago. Uh, a friend of mine asked, why don't Teslas have solar panels on the roof? They, like, it might have been two years ago. It might have been when I first got my Model 3. They asked, like, why, don't, why doesn't your Model 3 have a solar panel on the roof? And I thought, that's an interesting question. So I just, like did a few Google searches, did some math. I forget what the numbers are off the top of my head now, but I was like, oh, you know, the solar panel would add this much weight. And, you know, if you'd operated at this percent efficiency and you got this many hours of sunlight a day, you would only increase your range by X number of miles, which outweighs the benefit from the weight of the extra uh, solar panels. And then he he just was like, I don't even know where I'd begin answering that question. How did you even start? Like, what's step <laughs> one of figuring that out? <laughs> I was like, I don't yeah. know. I'll just, just start Googling, just start trying to figure it out. But there's it's just people who trends. like there's people who just invent the answers to them like they will not invent but like i don't i just people are so smart i just it's impressive <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's the title for this week's podcast people are so smart people are smart it's not people us are so smart. <laughs> people like smart coming soon to the receipt store whenever people call me dumb i'm just like yeah i am dumb in the grand <laughs> scheme of things i'm an idiot you're correct <laughs> Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. So speaking of, did we ever talk about the that family? Speaking of smart, did we ever talk about that family that was stranded in the Pacific Ocean with no food and no water for a couple of weeks? And oh, you told me about it. I'm not sure if you told it on here, though. I'm not sure if we talked about it on the podcast. It's this family. And uh, they were, I believe they were sailing around the world <laughs> and their boat sank in the Pacific and they weren't on any shipping lane. They were super isolated. Uh, So they got into like a life raft and they had no food, no water, and they survived. I forget how long they survived. I want to say it was like four weeks. They survived for several weeks uh, by giving themselves enemas of seagull blood and ocean water. (laughs) Pardon? Apparently, uh, the mother of the family was a nurse and knew that you could hydrate people uh, if in extreme cases you could hydrate people via enemas and they couldn't drink ocean water because it would dehydrate them uh so and whenever they found a dead seagull they would use the seagull's blood but they would give themselves enemas like that way in order to keep themselves hydrated their body would absorb the water but not take in any of the salt what what did they how did they administer the enema they didn't get into specifics of how it was done (laughs) but uh apparently it was like they had no choice like they had to stick seagull blood i mean they survived butts right Right. without without good tubing the only way i can imagine getting that up there would be to just blow it up someone's ass with your mouth yep and just not swallow it yep i mean there was that uh man versus wild where bear girls poured he gave himself an enema I'm not sure if he actually did it, but they blurred out. He had like a t- tube and he was pouring like rancid water that he found in some bird's nest on the side of a cliff, which he said would have made him throw up and dehydrated if he drank it. But your digestive tract can absorb water if you put it up your asshole. Gavin, that's question what he did for on you. A raft. Yeah. You love your family. <laughs> right? Would you. <laughs> Would you blow seagull blood up their assholes to help them survive? Do you think you could do it? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you get to the point where, like, on the brink of death, you just throw a lot of cultural norms out the window, wouldn't you? You would just be do like, this person needs to live. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so it happened in 1970. 19- <laughs> this happened in 1971, the story that I'm talking about. specifically. Uh, okay. I just looked it up. Ah, so they definitely hadn't watched Bear Grylls. <laughs> <laughs> was Bear Grylls even alive back then? 1971? When was he born? He might have been a maybe, little bear Maybe cub. just. Bear Grylls. <laughs> birthday. They survived for 37 days in a 74. nine-foot dinghy. So what was the reasoning behind 
the seagull blood? Was that just some sort of nutrients that water didn't have? I believe so. I'm trying to find the specifics. I read this article a while ago, but so I don't rem I don't remember uh, all of the specifics about it. I'm trying to find it again. Seagull blood. I much you need to kill so many seagulls to get an Oh God. Yeah, I'm like googling right now how much birds. how much blood is in a seagull. How so, uh, Google, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna how read... much seagull uh, blood fit, fits up human ass. How many seagulls <laughs> worth of blood? So oh, I'm gonna God. I'm gonna read the, qu the quote here. Um, the, their mother rubbed turtle oil on salt water on the salt water boils and tried to keep them all hydrated with makeshift enema tubes made from the rungs of a ladder. There you go. It was Fat it was her nursing background. She knew the water at the bottom of the dinghy was poisonous if taken orally because it was a mixture of rainwater, blood, and turtle offal. But if you take it rectally, the poison doesn't go through the digestive system. So turtle offal. Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. Okay. God. Not uh not not something I hope I ever have to do myself or ever ever have to find out. How, it sounds awful. How long were they at C4? Just out of curiosity. Did you already 30, mention that? 30 yeah, 37 days they had to survive that wow. way. How do they not wow. get And you think like quarantine sucks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's about five ounces of blood in a European herring gull. <laughs> and that's uh, if you're really ringing out the bird. You really get yeah, the that's a big, that's a big one. That's on that's the biggest that they usually get. And so they said on average it's 10% of their body weight. They average 3.4 pounds. That's 54.4 ounces. So it's five and a half ounces of blood in a big old chonker. You gotta appreciate them not uh turning to cannibalism, because I'm sure that would be much more pleasant. Than, uh... Eating a person is more pleasant than sticking a turtle up your ass? <laughs> <laughs> Wonder how we could title the yeah. podcast after that. <laughs> of course it would be. If you had just like a dude who you could eat, you could make that last. But, without... they, but this person's alive. None of these people were dead. That's the thing. You'd have to kill them and then eat them. Well, that's what cannibalism is, right? You don't just wait for someone to drop off. You I mean, thump, the, whack them in the head while they're asleep or people, something. That's what well, they like, do. Like there was that plane crash in the Andes where they ate the people who died in the, the plane crash. The Donner Party. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm like that counts as cannibalism. But once you're a cannibal, you're probably going to be into murdering as well. If you're that right, hungry. <laughs> I think they were just I mean, trying to find any solution where they didn't have to kill and eat someone. They were yeah, already that's what I'm dead. Saying. I'm impressed. <laughs> the the plane people. Yeah. They're already dead, right? Yeah. You said they, yeah. they ate the people who died? Yeah. So yeah. they didn't have to the, like, the actually kill anyone. Yeah, totally they just different. have to eat the people who already died. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying, you know, when people turn to cannibalism, they're desperate people. It's extreme situations. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, or they just to always wanted to if try human to flesh. I've always if wanted had to. to. If you had to eat so anybody gross. from history, who would you eat? If you had to eat somebody from history and you have to pick. I don't want to answer. Hmm. Someone to eat from his. Oh, I know. <laughs> I've got a good answer. I would eat. Uh, I would eat Genghis Khan. Why? He was like a super powerful warlord. I want to absorb his power by eating him. It'd be oh, a boss move, essence. right? I feel like yeah. I would want to eat someone who was Plus like a professional dietitian or something who ate really well for their entire life and would just you know be healthy. Yeah, and maybe. Maybe someone grass fed. If so, if some <laughs> lun lunatic just ate grass, I'd probably go for that. Some vegan. We eat, <laughs> we eat grass fed beef. Yeah. There's yeah. irony there that the v the people who don't eat meat would probably taste the best. Yeah, it's uh -oh. true. Gus. You still vegan, Gus buddy? Into it. <laughs> Numbers. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> oh, dogs. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. Is nobody else uh, gave an answer of who they would eat? I've just never, I've never, I, f I find that you would have always wanted to eat human. I find that to be just d gross. A little disturbing. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Very disturbing. Uh, you I've, ever I've, watched I've, Hannibal? I mean, I feel like the best part of the reason I started eating a vegan diet for so long was I wanted to try new foods. I was sick of all the foods I already knew. So I wanted to try something new. And this would be like the ultimate new food to try. But you probably haven't got anywhere near eating all the foods that you can eat before yeah, you have to turn to I human flesh. Yeah, I guess all flesh. the readily accessible foods that I can eat around here. 
So I like, think you should we've just agreed go that to China. That's why I said Genghis Khan. This... Yeah. <laughs> when we go back to the studio, Gus, you could stay working from home. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to come in in person. You can just stay very far away, very distance from us. Please. <laughs> have oh, you tried wear one any of those kind of those... lecture masks? Have you tried any of those <laughs> delicacies that, like a uh, balut or that rotten fish in a box and all that stuff? Where would you get that? Where would you get balut? You could probably go to a foreign supermarket. Well, not for a supermarket with foreign aisles and stuff. I'm not uh, privy to what balut is. It's like a. It's an egg. But instead of an unfertilized copy, yolk, now I'm, I know I know what you're talking about. Little baby chick thing that you just yeah. eat. We probably have markets somewhere in Austin that have those because we have some uh, international markets that Austin. have stuff like that. Balut. Look, see. if I can get a jar of Branston pickle in Austin, you can probably get balut. Uh, see, I'm looking it up. I'm doing a search on Yelp. If I eat too much eat cheese, it. I get balluted. Nice. <laughs> well, they've got it. I, I, I see. Uh, an Asian market. I'll I'll send you a video. I'll live stream it I'll, uh, to you, Gavin. You'll live stream you in a, <laughs> like a fetus. <laughs> there might be a that's that's quite a turn to go from being a vegan to just eating like a little baby chick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, where do you think chicken nuggets come from? I'm not saying that I I'm not saying that like eating what? other animals is disgusting. I'm just saying you, the guy who went <laughs> vegan, then just go just baby little chick. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I would just have an issue with the texture of some of the stuff. Like, at least in a nugget, it may all be in there, but you can't really see or tell if you're eating a beak or foot or feathers. So yeah, presentation it matters. It depends presentation what, matters. It depends what shape of the nugget. <laughs> Everyone knows the boot is made out of beaks. Uh, beak that is boot. a well-known fact. Yeah. Uh, speaking of well-known facts, we should probably wrap this up. Uh, we got we got a... <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everyone for watching. Hopefully everybody had some good holidays and uh, getting through this uh, this unusual holiday together. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching and making us part of your uh, routine. Talk to you all next time. 2021! Let's Woo! do it!